This is my DVD review of Ring of Honor Return Engagement. The opening matchup was Austin Aries versus Silas Young. This was a good seven to eight minute match. I was wishing it would be longer because I am a huge fan of Silas Young. I do want, you know, at what some point in the future him to get a Ring of Honor full time roster spot because I definitely think he's good. Saw some good back and forth action in here. Um, saw this was pretty much kind of a squash, but uh, Silas Young did get in some offense. Um, the end of the match comes when Silas Shung does the headstand in the corner into the Arabian press onto Austin Aries. Austin Aries gets his knees up, hits the brain buster on him, then um, puts him into the last chancery for the victory in a um, solid opener, you know, two and one fourth star match. Then after the match, you see Jimmy Jacobs come out here, and this is a segment. Um, you know, you see a lot of Jimmy Jacobs segments um, in, the, in this heat on this show, which was great. You know, the progression of his character was very good. This was the part where Austin Aries officially, you know, announces that he's not joined the Age of the Fall. Very good segment. Um, then after this, you see um, Jimmy Jake. At, during this, um, he uh, Austin um, Austin Aries mentions that he uh, slept with Lacey. So this um, gets Jimmy Jacobs pissed off. He says, "I'm not going to believe it." So then after this, you see it's what looks like a student match is going about to happen with Alex Sugarfoot Payne and Mitch Franklin. Match never happens. Jimmy Jacobs comes comes back out here, calls out Necro Butcher, and has Necro Butcher go in here in a handicap match against them and just beat beat the living hell out of them. Pretty much a squash match, you know. Beats them so bad. I, I can't remember if Mitch Frankel was bleeding, but I do I do remember that Alex Sugarfoot Payne was busted open real bad. And then the end of it comes when he choke slams him and pens both of them, and then calls out Morishima for their match. Calls out Morishima, you know saying that I'll meet you at the Hammerstein for their match. And, um, you know, since it was pretty much a squash and not really a match, I ain't going to give it a rating, but good stuff from Jimmy Jacobs so far in the evening. Um, then after this, uh, you see Adam Pierce and Brent Albright versus Claudio Castagnoli and Pele Primo. And this is one match on this show that I didn't like at all for some reason. I was expecting it to be at least pretty decent because Claudio and Albright, I know they do good stuff between each other before Pele. You know, he works pretty good, you know, with, you know, the big man that's very powerful, kind of like Brent Albright. So I was expecting this at least to be good, but for some reason or another, it didn't, it didn't click. It wasn't that good. The end of the match comes when you see Claudio and Albright um, taking on each other in the ring, back and forth. You see Adam Pierce grab the briefcase, which later on we find out that um, NWA belts in there, um, tries to hit um, Claudio, Claudio with it, Claudio ducks, and he hits Albright, then... Claudio hits the Ricola Mom onto Albright for the victory, and I would say a two-star match. One of those matches that I could probably have dealt without with on this show. Then up next was a um, four-corner survival shimmer match between Ashley Lane, Daisy Hayes, Mischief, and Lacey. And this was a good shimmer match. Finally, on a Ring of Honor DVD, probably for the only second or third time, they actually put on a good quality shimmer match, which I think they need to do more frequently because... If they want to sell the Shimmer product and want people to have a reason to check out the Shimmer DVDs, they need to, you know, kind of utilize, you know, it well in Ring of Honor and put on good quality matches that people are like. Hey, I like this. Let me check it out. Um, so this match was very good. You saw good stuff with everyone in this match. Um, Mischief picks up the victory after hitting the Desecrator onto Ashley Lane in a three-star match. You know, a very good women's match. Then after this, um, Jimmy Jacobs comes out here. Um, Lacey's still out there, and Lacey says he's th uh, she's through with him. Then you uh, see him kind of uh, break down, start crying. She walks up the ramp. You see Austin Aries waiting for them to make out the stage in front of Jimmy Jacobs while he's still in the ring. And you see him have a total breakdown and start crying. You know, another great segment from Jimmy Jacobs, which a lot of the segments in his progression his character, like I said, was great during this show. Then up next was Chris Hero versus Delirious. And this was a good match. Good back and forth action. Uh, really enjoyed it. Um, as far as Chris Hero's serious persona, I do like that and like that he has a new gimmick now instead of, you know, the comical gimmick that he has. Not sure how much I'm feeling this whole knockout gimmick where he's went in by a knockout forearm or a roaring forearm, whichever one you want to call it. Um, he does the same thing in here to Delirious, but you did see some good stuff in here. Um, he hits it twice. Hits two roaring, roaring elbows to Delirious in about a two and a half star match. Pretty good. Um, then up next was the match of the night. It was um, the Motor City Machine Guns and Chris Saban and Alex Shelley 
versus the Briscoe Brothers, and obviously this was not as good as the Good Times Great Memories match from last year, but this was a damn good tag, you know. I'll say the one thing, if you compare the first five to ten minutes between both matches, the first five to ten minutes of this match was much better. Pretty much this one um, started off fast and kept going, you know, a lot of fast-paced action, a lot of good back-and-forth tags, um, a lot of good in-ring psychology from um, the Motor City Machine Guns, a lot of good tag team wrestling from both teams, and really showcasing why these two teams are, you know, easily, I wouldn't even say arguably, but I would say easily, are the two best tag teams going today. And, you know, definitely a great tag team match. Really enjoyed it. A lot of great stuff. Um, Alex Shelley uh, and Chris Saban pick up the victory after Alex Shelley hits a super slice spread onto Mark Briscoe for the victory in a four-and-a-half-star match. And you know, some people might think I'm overrating it just a tad bit, but... I really enjoyed this match. You know, it was a great tag and, you know, delivered what I thought it would. I Obviously, I had, it, it probably had a lot of high expectations to some people. Some people probably were expecting it to beat last year's, but I kind of knew they wouldn't because that, that that would be hard to top that match. They had a good time. It's great memories because that was probably one of the best tag team matches I've seen in Ring of Honor history and probably one of the top tag team matches I've ever seen. And then up next, after this, the Age of the Fall come out here. They attack the Briscoes, and this is when they do the angle where uh, Mark Briscoe, Mark, Bris Mark Briscoe earlier injured himself and had an aggravated arm in a pro wrestling no match, and he kept working on it. And at this point, he uh, had to uh, have they had to do an angle to get him out. So instead of just saying he was injured, they did this angle where um, Jimmy Jacobs comes in there, stabs Mark Briscoe in the arm with the uh, railroad spike. Just a great segment, just showing the anger that. It's building up with um with um Jimmy Jacobs in this evening was great. You know, a lot of great stuff. Um, and a good tag match too. I'm glad you know they saved the Jimmy Jacobs stuff for after the match, not in the match. So you know, just great stuff there. Then the next matchup was Kota Ibushi versus El Generico. And this was a great match, like you would expect. Um, a lot of good back and forth action, a lot of fast paced action. You know, these two are very good. Um. Kota Ibushi, uh, all his four matches that he had in Ring of Honor in April, all were great matches, and pretty much one of the huge reasons that, you know, you would want to see the shows for is his matches, and definitely like to see him more in Ring of Honor in the future. I know he's going to be working the uh, Ring of Honor Japan shows coming up in about a week, I think it's um, the 13th and 14th of September that they're doing that, so definitely can't wait to see him in Ring of Honor more. Um, and this was a great match, like you would expect. Uh, Kota Ibushi, um, Phoenix Splash onto El Generico, a lot of good back and forth action in the match. Um, just a very enjoyable match, four stars. Then up next was, it was a six-man tag team match with Tyler Black, Joey Matthews, and Zach Gowan of the Age of the Fall versus the Vulture Squad of Jack Evans, Ruckus, and Jigsaw. And, um, this match, it kind of had weird placement on this show, but... The stuff that happened after the match made sense for it being positioned at this part of the match. Um, it was a little disappointing match. I um, thought it could have been a little better. But with having Joey Matthews and Zach Gowan in there, you probably weren't expecting that much from it. Um, Tyler Black did his best to carry his team through this match. Um, him and Jack Evans did some good stuff. You know, you saw some good stuff from Ruckus and Jigsaw in this match. It wasn't a bad match, but it was one of those matches that I... It, it was kind of like a cool-down match after, you know, the Kota Ibushi match and the Motor City Machine Guns versus Briscoe's match kind of had a cool-down match until the main event. So that was basically what this was. So, you know, and stuff leading after this match, Tyler Black picks up the victory for the Age of the Fall. The stuff that happens after this match was very good. See Jimmy Jacobs come out there, Age of the Fall, all the members leave, and they call out Austin. They, he calls out Austin Aries. See them brawl for a little bit, then Age of the Fall, all the, all the members come in there. Beat down Austin Aries. Um, then you see, um, then you see Jimmy Jacobs try to about uh, hit, a, about to stab uh, Austin Aries with the railroad spike. Lacey comes in there and stops him. Looks like he's about to do it to her, um, but he stops. Has breakdown. You see a, you know, complete mental breakdown of this character and his progression from the beginning to the to this portion of the show was just great. You know, great, um, you know, stuff between his uh, with his gimmick uh, this whole evening. A lot of good. Storyline progression with Austin Aries and Jimmy Jacobs, a lot of great stuff with him as well. Um, then you have the main event with Kevin Steen versus Nigel McGinnis. Pretty much just like their match in Justice, Nigel McGinnis 
um, does a um, cheap tactic to pick up the victory here. He holds on to the tights of Kevin, Kevin Steen. Um, but still, it was a good match. You saw some good stuff in here. End of it kind of hurt it a little, but not too much. It helps out. You know, Nigel McGinnis' char Nigel McGinnis's character had to get some good heel heat for you know winning uh, winning matches against this second time he's done this. Uh, Kevin Steen, and I would say even with the ending about a three and one four star match. Overall, I would give this DVD an 8.75. You know, great stuff on this DVD. If you're a fan of Jimmy Jacobs, I would definitely recommend this DVD for you. Kota Ibushi had a great match, and the Briscoes and Moses Machine Guns had a great match. This is a show I would recommend to anyone. Definitely, I think you would enjoy it. And, um, yeah, that's it. Peace.